After a somewhat miraculous journey of over 300 miles from the Pacific Ocean, these adult returning salmon and steelhead have one of three choices to make once they're in Lake Billy Chinook. They can either go up the Crooked River, the Metolius River, or the Deschutes River. The fish chose the Crooked River. Most of the biologists are kind of puzzled why. My theory is because of all the springs and of course the best tasting water in Oregon. We believe the Crooked River's habitat is producing higher numbers of healthier juvenile fish, which in return leads to more adults returning to the Crooked River. The two key species for our Crooked River would be the Chinook salmon and the Mid-Columbia steelhead. So we know that if we can get these two fish reestablished in sustainable runs year after year, that the rest of the system will be healthy as well. That'll be an indicator of system health. species that is as central to the Northwest human experience as salmon. They are a critical food source for humans and animals alike. They support a thriving commercial and recreational fishing industry. Fish chose the Crooked River. They chose to come here in their search for suitable habitat. They are here and we need to help them access it as best we can. Lake Billy Chinook, which is the most popular reservoir in the county, had salmon and steelhead reintroduced into it when their dam had to be relicensed. So that put more recent impetus on us to try to figure out how to accommodate salmon and steelhead that were starting to go up the Crooked River. The Opal Springs Fish Passage Project is a win-win because it eliminates a barrier to fish migration moving up the Crooked River, and it also maintains a renewable hydropower source for the community. It is the number two priority fish passage project in the whole state, according to the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. Today, they're trapping and hauling adult fish around that project. It's not volitional passage right now, which would of course mean the fish are moving on their own. Before we could get started, we were faced with two main challenges. The first really was the engineering designs that would fit both the canyon and meet all the project objectives. The second one was securing the funding. The early 2000s is when the Pelton Roundview project was relicensed. That triggered a series of events, and of course one of the big actions we need to take is to get passage past the Opal Diversion Site on the Crooked River. What Deschutes Valley Water District could have done is waited until their current license term expired in 2032, but they decided instead to proactively engage with us, and I think we all ended up the better for it. Well, there's two reasons for doing this fish passage. One is the right thing to do, and two, you can actually get better hydro revenue if you have fish-friendly hydroelectric power. We can get classified as renewable and make more hydroelectric dollars in our future. We hope that this project contributes to achieving healthy, sustainable, and harvestable populations of fish throughout the Crooked River and the Deschutes watershed. When I think about Opal Springs, this amazing visual of stark canyon walls and beautiful water and a spring coming right out of the side of this canyon in and of itself is just a unique place in the state. But it's also really unique because it is a working system. The Crooked River is home to agriculture. It is home to timber in the upper reaches. The water district is providing a vital function for the local economy. With passage at Opal Springs, that will be taking care of the number one priority in terms of fish restoration in the Crooked. The biggest obstacle to this whole process was uh, getting all of the fish agencies and us on the same page as far as what kind of project. How much do you raise the dam level? Which type of fish passage? We're actually raising the elevation of the dam so that we have a little more hydroelectric power, but also part of that is used for a water bank so that when the biologists call us, we can pass water over the part of the dam for attractant water. Fish tend to follow the water, so we did not want them going towards the turbine tail race. We wanted them to go towards the fish ladder, so we needed more attraction water. We will be able to notify the Seats Valley Water District, tell them, hey, we have fish in the area. We want to use some of the water from our fish account and increase flows in that bypass reach.
As you can see, we've started into the mass excavation along that rock face. You can see that we've built a ramp up the side of the hill. Eventually, that entire dirt ramp, including those three large boulders, are all going to go away. And once we get to that point, we'll need to build the fish ladder all the way out to the switchback. We were forming the walls for the spillway chute. There will be a gate between those two walls, which is a safety mechanism for the dam so that if they have some flooding, that gate can be opened and allow excess water past the dam. There will be 42 separate little pools within that ladder that will bring fish up that elevation of about 30 feet in height, roughly. So that's a pretty tall lift. The ladder here will open up 125 miles of habitat. We are physically breaking down a barrier. We are going to have fish entering into a system in a very different way than before. But the project itself is really breaking down barriers. That ability to partner between a watershed council and a water district and regulatory agencies and funders, when we do that well here, we break down barriers in other parts of the state to do projects equally as large in other systems. The Watershed Council has done a great job of working with private landowners to implement these projects, but there's a lot more work to be done. The tribe's general priorities in the Crooked River Basin and for that matter the Deschutes Basin are putting the plans into place that will ensure that seven generations from today we will have a healthy basin to help sustain our people. We hope to achieve a reintroduction program above the Pelton Round Butte project and the Opal Springs fish ladder project was really the last barrier for that particular arm of the basin, the Crooked River Basin. And bringing this ladder to completion will be the last hurdle that the fish were at during their migration route. The success and effectiveness of this project really has two facets to it the completion of phase one, and that is construction of the fish ladder. Phase two is gonna be operation and monitoring. In the short term, of course, we hope to see operation of the fish ladder such that it provides safe, effective, timely passage of migrating fish. In the long term, though, we hope that this project contributes to achieving healthy, sustainable, and harvestable populations of fish throughout the Crooked River. And ultimately, hopefully, that means that we might see a year-round fishery in the Crooked River someday for some of these species. So it's been at least 50 years since salmon and steelhead have moved through the Opal Springs site under their own volition. Here we are now. November 2019, we have a completed ladder. In fact, we've witnessed the first documented steelhead swimming through the ladder on its way into the Crooked River to find spawning areas. Into the future, the Watershed Council would like to see a continuation of the restoration work that addresses limiting factors to fish production. Ultimately, the objective in a working lands watershed like the Crooked is to get it to all work together. The Council actually believes it can be done and we're committed fully to the mission.